Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He's good all the time and worthy to be praised. He is the Most High God, El Elyon, El Che, the living God, who loves us with a true agape love. He wants to fill our hearts. He wants to fill our minds with the knowledge of His will. He wants to fill us with His perfect love. He wants to keep us in perfect peace. He wants to give us rest, a rest that no one in this world can give you, no matter who they are, no matter what their name is, no matter how good they look, no matter how nice they are. It doesn't matter what who they are in your life. God is our everything. Our Father is everything. Jesus is our everything. The Holy Spirit is our everything. Who have we in heaven but Him? You know, Who is there beside Him? There is no one. No one who loves you the way that He loves you. No matter how much they say they do. No matter if any, no one has ever said, I love you. Or if they, that person that said, I love you, cheated, lied, stole, kicked you, and stabbed you all in the back. Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. The Lord loves you, and he's not going to throw you away. He never throws us away. We are to keep ourselves in love with God. <laughs> yeah. Now I pray for us to stop looking out into the world and start looking to the one who created the world and all that there is in it. How we, be, would, we would begin to just not lean on our own understanding about this situation and that set situa situation and, and over those circumstances. God has given us life, life and peace, but it's all by walking in the Spirit of God. If we come after the Spirit of God, if we walk in the Spirit, we will have life and peace. That's what it says in the book of Romans. We're in Christ, and Christ is in us. And if we are in Christ, then we get part of the Holy Spirit in us, teaching us all things. I pray for us to hear and to hear by the Spirit of God. I know it says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the uh, hearing by the Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That word of God that we hear in our hearts is from the Holy Spirit teaching us all things. See, those who... God is spirit. And those who worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, all the knowledge and the wisdom that we need to be able to handle this situation, that, that circumstance, it all comes from him. I'm not saying that we're just, you know, like sheep in the world walking through the world, even though we are. But God knows the right decision when we're trying to make a decision. He knows the right course to set your feet on so that we'd be able to walk through the, the pain, the aches, the misery, the grief, the sorrow. Yeah, I said it like that on purpose. There's too much pain involved in this life when we lean on our own understanding. But he has the wisdom and the knowledge to lift us up and cause us to walk out our salvation the right way. That we wouldn't lean on our, our feelings. That we wouldn't lean on what somebody else just said. We wouldn't lean on our own understanding in something that is just too hard for us to figure out and wrap our mind around. We have an expectation from God that he will speak to our hearts, <laughs> you know? He, if he, he knows, and I don't want to use the word if because we know that he knows the past, present, and the future. And I'm not saying that we just stand there and do nothing either. As a man plans his way, God directs his steps. That's what the Bible says. 
we can direct our path. We can get up and plan the day out. We can plan out the year. But we always have an expectation of the Lord. Because he knows what's going, what's, what's ahead of us. You know, and I'll bring this one up. I, I know I don't like bringing this one up. But you know, before my sister passed away at the age of 55, she had just turned 55. I had dreams. And I had visions. I had things going on before that ever happened. God was showing me something. I shared some of that with my sister. And, and you know, she paused for a minute in some of the things that I was telling her. And, and she acted like, oh, I'm not, I don't, mm. you know, she was listening. Until I say, I say it again, I don't like bringing that up. But what I'm saying is that the Lord knows how to give us dreams and visions. He knows how to interrupt our, 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 our path and, and show us things so that we're prepared for what's ahead or maybe we could have stopped that however that was something else that is in his hands I don't believe it had to happen but it did but I was prepared either way the Lord wants to direct our path he sees the enemy's plan for our lives and he sees our plan. He sees his plan. He knows his plan. And we have to be open to it. Today, tomorrow, and the next day. Every day we're open to it. You know, I was reading Psalm 91. And I was looking at verse 2. It said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. And I know I'm reading from the King James. But, but listen, surely he will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. I, I love it from here because when I hear noisome pestilence, I hear spiritual pestilence. Something is speaking into my atmosphere to deceive me and cause me to rest in my feelings, to lean on my own understanding. The snare of the fowler is any situation and circumstance God does not tempt us with evil, by the way. He tempts us with good. So when evil presents itself to us, I'm just going by what the Word says. When evil presents us itself to us, when sin presents itself to us, God didn't send sin to your door. He didn't send sin into your house. It was already there, crouching at the door waiting to have you that's what it says to Cain in, in, in Genesis sin was crouching at the door waiting to have him and the Lord told him the, the Lord confirmed it gave him a word to help him make the right decision but he still with, went with how he felt the more the enemy spoke the more the enemy kept you know, telling him, Let's look at your brother, just look at Mr. Goody, two shoes over there. He kept sending him deceiving words. It's not what God said. God said, change your mind. You can still, you, you, you can still get the same attention, the same portion as your brother. Come on, just change your mind. And he didn't do that. He went the other way. But, but the point is that this sin is waiting, trying to have us. And we're supposed to overcome sin. And I'm talking about the person of sin. And I'm talking about that power of sin that still rests in our human nature. That human nature that we have to get up out of. But if we are aware of what of the presence of God, of that that God is in us and with us and to us and through us, that He's our portion, that this salvation that we've been given is a living, active salvation. It's alive in our members. We've been given the nature 
of God. By faith in, the Christ, in Christ Jesus, by coming to this word and drinking and eating, from being filled with the knowledge of his will because we know he loves us. I'm going to, in my mind, I'm going over here to Second Peter, no, First Peter, chapter 5, where it says the, the enemy comes like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And we resist him steadfast and in the faith. That's, where we, that's how we get rewarded. We keep on resisting sin. Resisting that temptation with the word of God. Just like Jesus did when he is walking in that desert place. You know, he was led by the spirit to be tempted of the enemy. We are led by the spirit. And when temptation comes, when evil comes knocking, we resist it steadfast and in the faith. The reward of God is life and peace. It, it's a steadfastness in him. It's a, your heart and mind is kept by God in perfect peace. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of Jesus Christ. Until the day that we are lifted off this earth. I can't wait. <laughs> what a good day. But in the meanwhile, while we're walking through this valley, the shadow of death, our heart and our mind is fixed on God. I did. I heard somebody tell me one time that this, you cannot tame the soul, but that's, that can't be true because what book is in it? I think it's Deuteronomy chapter 5, uh, chapter 6, verse 5. We are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, our, that's our soul, our mind, will, and emotions, our, our thought life, and with all of our strength. That's this physical body, picking up this book to read it. I don't care if you're blind, they have a braille Bible. If you're deaf, there's a way. There's a way. The Word is there, presenting itself to us. The Lord won't leave us in darkness. He is the light that lights every single one of us. And that spark sparks in our hearts and sparks our minds. See, the, 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 the Word says in Romans, the Holy Spirit quickens this flesh. It's like giving us the heart of God. It's like giving us the, the, the tenderness of, of the Father Himself. Every part of us is obedient. It lays prostrate before who He is. We're strengthened by who He is. This is the God of our salvation. He's given himself to us so that we could live in him, so that he could live in us, so that he could help us in all that we're doing. He will direct our steps. To be in love with him is everything, I'm telling you right now. I want to get back to Psalm 91 here. I could read this. I, I think I've... I could read this a million times, a trillion times until the day of Jesus Christ and still pull something out of here that draws us closer to God, that causes us to step right into his love. His love is our protection. His love is the blood of Jesus. His love is exactly what we need. His love is our covering. It's our protection. This love is our peace. This love is our patience. This love is our mercy. Even when someone's doing something that they have no business doing and you know them well, it's mercy. Galatians chapter 6, you who are spiritual, restore such a one. I should have read it right from the <laughs> from Galatians, but but it, but it's you who are spiritual. Help that person. Have mercy. Because if you don't have mercy, what tempts you? What tempts you will overcome you. That's why we keep ourselves in love with God. We keep ourselves in the love of God. 
because we can't do it with this human flesh. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go back into our old ways, into our own strength. We are being born from above. We've been born from above. We are being born from above. We're being renewed in the knowledge of God, learning how to walk in a new strength, learning how to walk in new ways, humbling ourselves always to Him, to His voice, going deeper to understand this great love that He has for us. Ephesians chapter 3, to know the love of God the height and the depth and the width of God's love. It really means something. When you get a hold of it, it's supposed to birth something beyond what you see, beyond what you feel, beyond what you can even imagine. Because God's love is infinite. It never ends. His love endures forever. His mercy endures forever. God's love for us will endure forever. And this love, it, it just permeates your heart. It permeates your spirit, soul, and body. Imagine that. Everybody out here looking for love. When I was in my 20s, I thought I was looking. I don't know what I was looking for. <laughs> Honestly. Honestly. No, love wasn't explained to me. I thought love was sex. I, I don't know. All I know is this love right here that is in God. That God, well, isn't it true? God is love. This love that he loves us is, with is, is so permeates our existence. That you are satisfied in everything. In everywhere you are, in whatever state you find yourself in, you know that you're in the one who will never leave you nor forsake you. In fact, you're ready to go home already, ready to be with the Lord. You're ready for the coming of Christ. We're so satisfied. I can't even explain it, the depth of God's love for us. And if that love was ever to permeate our soul, how it would be so willing to lay down in the knowledge of him. Anytime the Holy Spirit speaks, we would be so ready to do whatever. You know, even if it makes us look, look stupid, we'd be like, okay, have your way, Lord. Your will be done in this earth as it is in heaven, Father God. I like what Jesus did at when he was in the garden. And he asked the father to take the cup from him because fear came in. He was trembling. He was sweating with great drops of blood because he knew what he was about to walk through. It was going to be not just painful in the physical body, but painful for the soul. <laughs> it was going to hurt his, hurt his thinking. It was going to hurt his will. It was going to hurt his emotions. This was going to crush him. <laughs> Yet he said, not my will be done, but yours, Lord, yours, Father. Who have I in heaven but thee? There is none that I desire but thee, Lord God. In this whole entire earth, there is just nobody that I want. Ruling over me, being in me, directing my steps, helping me breathe. <laughs> I don't mean, and, and yes, you could say physical breathing, but I meant just to be still and rest in the hands of the Almighty, the perfect one. To take every thought and just lay it out. <laughs> Here, take it. You know, you could, if the Holy Spirit says something, if that, if that still small voice, that, how do you say it now, that learning to live by the the grace of God. You know, it's not pressure. There's no pressure in the grace of God. Not really, not the pressure like we felt in this flesh, in this world. We learn how to live by the unforced rhythms of God's grace. When he's speaking to our heart 
and our mind wants to rise up and interfere because somebody did something that you didn't like or they treated you all your life the way that you didn't deserve. At least we'd feel that we didn't deserve to be treated that way. But we're in this world, in this flesh and blood body. What did you expect? That the devil would just leave you alone? That sin would just not knock at your door? But the nature of God rises up. The word of God comes to your remembrance. And instead of taking those feelings and those emotions and venting or hurting yourself and hurting others or bleeding on others, you take this hurt and this pain and you say here Lord that hurt thy will be done in this earth as it is in heaven you say father to the to these to the, I'm talking about to your soul to your mind will and emotions to this wrestling this fight that we have going on in the inside of us and we just want to live in the rest of God but why won't they stop it why won't my mind just quit it and the voice of the Almighty comes. The greater one that is in you, with that, with that still small voice, that, that unforceful rhythm. And we say, we say what Jesus said, Thy will be done. Not mine. That's submitting to God. That's resisting the enemy. Lord's got a plan for our lives. But do we really want to be in the love of God if it means losing your soul? I, and I'm not talking about losing it to the world, but holding on to it for yourself. You really are losing it just like the world is losing their soul. We're taking our soul and we're planting it in the Word of God so that it become, become fat in the knowledge of Him and get used to the kingdom of God, get used to the ways of God, get used to this will of God so that we can truly live in the divine nature of God. So that we can really learn what it is to rest in the hand of the Almighty and just be His kids, be the Lord's children. God is so, so good, but I think I'm going too long again, as I always do. I just really want us to come into the knowledge of his will for our lives and really rest and be in love with the one who loves us. This unconditional love that he has can be birthed in us. We stop resisting him. Remember, who we face at the end of all this all vengeance, I'm going to say that all vengeance belongs to God. Whatever somebody's done to you, whatever they said, don't let the curse of the enemy destroy your life. There's a way out from the presence of God. There's a way that we keep moving away from him. When we trust in how we feel about this situation and we would become fearful and afraid when we don't listen to the Holy Spirit. Uh, I, I, that's really rejecting God. There's a sin on to death. I think that sin is grieving the Holy Spirit. It's resisting Him. He's in the earth convicting the whole world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Oh, I'm going to have to close. But in Psalm 91, take it up and study it again. Take every piece of it and just really look at it. This is a promise of God to us. This is what salvation has brought us. And God is our salvation. He's our strength. 
Salvation is supposed to be around us, around you, just surrounding you. In the spiritual realm, there's an invisible wall that your physical eyes cannot see. Its spiritual wall of salvation is all around you, and it's very hard to penetrate when we know the walls of our salvation. Isaiah chapter 26. When we know the walls of our salvation, God is our salvation and in this salvation is every promise of God to keep our hearts and minds to protect us and to help us Psalm 91 in the end says he'll show us his salvation He, he said he shall call upon me wait wait verse 20 which verse is a 14 because He has set his love upon me. That's the word right there. Because he set his love on me, I will. This is what God is saying to the children of God, to the whole world. Come to me. I love you. I want to heal you. I want to heal you where you hurt. I want to give you the right understanding while you're in this world so you'll understand your purpose well I have a destination for you I have a plan for your life and though evil be around you and trouble be everywhere you're more than a conqueror no matter how tall you are no matter how short you are no matter how fat you are how skinny you are no matter what color you are no matter how you talk no matter how you walk Even if you walk or don't walk, have ears and eyes and don't have, whatever it is, I have a purpose for your life. We need to trust him. He loves us. And he's, you see, in in, in eternity, it's never going to be like that. I'm coming to my close right now. I I was, before I got started, I had this thought. I was telling the Lord I love him. I was saying, Lord, I love you in all I want is you. All I want is you. And with all sincerity, I really mean that. And I, the next thought was, imagine walking up to someone that you like, somebody that you desire, and telling them, I love you, and all I want is you. Well, with, with people, we run a risk. But with God, there isn't one. He loves you with an agape love that will never stop. He loves you through, throughout your whole entire being, your, your core. The Lord loves you. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, He loves you. Spirit, soul, and body, the Lord loves you. He wants to give you His ways, and His ways are the only ways that are perfect, not ours. He wants to lead you and guide you in all truth, show you the right way to live. He wants to give you the kingdom and show you how to live in the kingdom. Psalm 73, and then it's over here, uh, verse 25. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. It is good for me, I'm skipping a verse, it is good for me to draw near to God. I put my trust in the Lord, in the Lord God, that I may declare all his works. And I probably shouldn't have skipped verse 27, because it always talks about trouble. You know, it's, there's always going to be some trouble somewhere. But we don't have to lean on that trouble and let it get in us and make us weary in our mind, weary in our ways, make us want to give up doing good. Trust the Lord today. Draw near to Him. Trust in the Lord and declare all His works. Let the love of God just permeate your soul and you won't have such a hard time resting in the hand of the Almighty we can trust him 
Be blessed, people of God. I love you. Bye-bye.